Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am finishing this small hat trick of videos comparing React.js and Vue.js. If you haven't caught the previous two videos, I encourage you to do so. The first one is what I think Vue.js does better than React. The second video is what I like React, what I think React does better than Vue.js. And today, to even things out, because I like to dwell in that gray area where things depend with context, is to kind of discuss how Vue.js and React are more similar than meets the eye. So I'm gonna go through a few features that are in some ways almost interchangeable between the two library framework things and kind of show how, you know, they're different, but they're also very much the same. First things first, very easy. Both React and Vue make it very easy to make rich UI applications. That is their explicit goal, and they both obtained it wonderfully. You can make a very large, very rich application with both React and Vue. So whichever one you use, you're in good hands, frankly. I mean, each website starts off with, you know, take the tutorial, and you can kind of read how the uh, how React works. And then with Vue.js, you can again do get started and read the nice little introduction about how Vue.js works. So a nice kind of tour de force on how both uh, both Vue.js and React think about making UI applications. Both Vue and React do props as a way to pass down data, which I actually didn't even include here as a data point, but I think it kind of goes without saying that they both use props as a way to kind of pass data from parent to child. But what I found even more interesting was the way in which Vue.js and React indirectly passes data from parents to child. So with React, you have context as a way to pass data through the component tree without having to pass props down. And then with Vue.js, you use provide and inject, which is literally just the same thing as context, just with a different name. So with Vue.js, you can provide some value and then some child can then inject that value into the component. So it's a way you can, parent components can serve as a dependency provider for its children, regardless of how deep the component hierarchy is. So again, solving the same problem, just a different way. This feature I found most funny. Uh, by default, React and Vue, they render their UI just as you would expect in the tree of components, but sometimes you wanna control where the UI actually renders. So with React, you have portals to kind of define, to decide where in the DOM you actually rendered that UI. So React is portals, and then Vue.js has uh, teleport, <laughs> which is like portals, teleport. Uh, yeah, same idea for sure. And here you have teleport to body to kind of say where this UI should be rendered. So same problem, almost exactly the same solution. React and Vue have recently kind of rethought how you make components in both of their respective library frameworks. Uh, with React, they went with this thing called hooks to make it easy to define state and side effects inside of function components. Uh, with Vue.js, they added the composition API, which is also very similar to hooks as a way to kind of functionally define behavior in a Vue.js component where you have this setup function that you can use all of these uh, things to set the data and side effects in and you kind of have a sync on mounted call this function. So very similar to hooks with user effects and again, uh, very similar ways of solving similar problems. Any large UI application will require some debugging and both React and Vue.js have very mature dev tools. This is the React developer tools and this is the Vue.js developer tools as a way to kind of introspect and see what is actually going on underneath the hood. So if you wanted to debug your applications, you have a way to do so. And last but not least, I think the most important thing that Vue.js and React have in common is their incredibly strong commitment to backwards compatibility. Uh, React rewrote their entire internal reconciliation uh, rendering engine in React 16, which is, oh, gosh, three years ago now. Um, but when they actually rewrote it, um, codenamed Fiber, uh, they made sure that they didn't break any existing functionality. So you could upgrade from 15 to 16 and not have to rewrite your entire application. And Vue.js did the same exact thing with their huge uh, 3.0 rewrite, where they pretty much rewrote the entire Vue framework, rewritten in TypeScript, 
but also had complete compatibility with all existing functionality. And that commitment to making sure that these applications written either Vue.js and React is such a strong vote of confidence for you to use either one with comfort that they're not going to just abandon the existing code that you've built years building up. So the fact that this is a core tenant of both frameworks is, is honestly the biggest thing and the best thing that they have in common. And that is kind of the high level overview of the things that React and Vue.js have in common. Uh, they are more similar than meets the eye. Uh, they definitely try to solve the same problems. They kind of go about it in some different ways, but sometimes the ways they solve the problems is almost uh, eerily similar. And again, the best thing is that they're both always committed to backwards compatibility. So if you are currently a React engineer, I would encourage you to maybe try out Vue.js to see what it looks like. Same for Vue.js engineers, try out React to see what it looks like. There's things to learn in the different ways that each framework does things, but then also there's comfort in knowing that they do things in a largely similar way. That's my video for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you're not a subscriber, become one for more videos like this every week in your YouTube inbox. Until then, I will catch you in the next video. So keep happy. Nope. Keep coding. Stay happy. Bye.